Hall is switching over their audio video stuff. So we are really just relying on the kind of one camera and mic tonight. So we are going to ask that everybody kind of lift your voices a little bit and make sure that we can, that everybody can hear you and that we can try to get you picked up on the audio. And with that, uh, good evening. This is the Zoning Board of Appeals meeting for the City of Evanston. The Zoning Ordinance directs this body to hear applications for variances, special uses, and appeals from decisions of the Zoning Administrator. Depending on the type of matter, this board will make either a final determination or send its recommendation to the City Council. I'm Laurie Summers, the current chair. Here with me tonight are board members Matt Rogers, Beth McLennan, and Andrew Gallagher. We therefore have a quorum. Also present here tonight from city staff is Melissa Klotz and Ken Cox. This is a formal hearing and there are rules that govern our proceedings. Most important is that only one person may speak at a time. Anyone who wishes to address the board may do so at the appropriate time on the regarding matter. Our normal procedure is to hear from the staff and the documents that are on file. We will then receive testimony and other evidence from the applicant or appellant. After hearing from the applicant or appellant, any person with a legal interest in property located within 500 feet of the subject property may present evidence, reasonably question witnesses, or seek a continuance of the hearing. Next, others who wish to make a statement regarding the matter may do so at the time. When all opposing testimony and other statements have been heard, the applicant or appellant will be given an opportunity for a rebuttal or opposing statement. All testimony will be under oath, although we do not apply the strict rules of evidence. We request that you please limit your testimony or statement to your own personal knowledge. When you testify or make a statement, please state your name and address and be sure to sign up on the sheet that was provided at the entrance. We are audio and video recorded in this, split, in this space. Um, again, as I mentioned earlier, um, we are in the midst of changeover, so please uh, speak up if you can uh, to make sure that we are properly recorded. And you should also know that we are subject to broadcast. When all of the other testimony, evidence, and statements have been received into the record, the board will close the record and begin its deliberations. Um, we have a fairly full agenda uh, this evening. Uh, we do try to um, end by about 10.30 with our last case around 10, so we're going to watch that and try to see how we're going um, as we get there, and we'll keep you apprised. And with that, we will move into our agenda. And our first item of business is with respect to approval of meeting minutes for August 6th and August 20th. I will note uh, that given that I am the only member here that was at the August 6th meeting, uh, we have decided to hold over approval of those minutes. Uh, but we do have uh, several members from the August 20th meeting, so are there any corrections to the August 20th minutes? I have none. If there's none, are, is there a motion? I would move that we adopt the Zoning Board of Appeal minutes for our August 20th meeting as they have been drafted. I second the motion. It's been moved and seconded. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 And I will note my abstention. So those minutes are approved and will be carried forward. And all of our business is new business this evening, so our first item of business is with respect to 2619 Poplar Avenue. And, could you, and Melissa can read that into her when she's ready. Robert Malani, landscape architect, applies for major zoning relief to locate a patio in the front yard of a through lot. The applicant requests a patio in the required front yard where patios are only permitted in the required rear yards. Zoning code section 6463B10. The Zoning Board of Appeals is the determining body for this case. Documents included as part of the record are variance application submitted July 18, 2013, standards form, zoning analysis, plan of survey dated October 28, 2008, site plan, images from applicant, aerial view of property, zoning map of property, images of property, and spark draft meeting minutes of July 31st, 2013. Okay, and at this time, if we could swear in anyone who seeks 
that they might at all wish to speak with us uh, regarding 2619 Poplar Avenue. Do you swear our friend to tell the truth throughout the course of these proceedings? Uh, I do. I do. Thank you. Um, and if we could have uh, the applicant or whoever will be presenting. And again, sir, if you could say your name and address, please. Uh, it's Robert Milani from the Chalet Landscape Company. Um, we'll see the landscape architect from Chalet representing the Kingwood Boss at 2619 Poplar. And if you could sort of run through the proposal for us. Um, the issue at hand is it's a three story structure for building um, with very, very small lot as a double frontage. Uh, there's two units attached at the back. Same frontage at uh, Poplar and Broadway. Uh, the yard, the front yard is very small. Uh, they have a driveway, it has permeable papers, and the north property line is about five feet wide. The issue at hand is that there's no place for the family to enjoy their yard without it's just sitting on the grass. Uh, currently, they're meditating on the top floor, it's a roof deck. Uh, but to get downstairs to the ground level, there's really no place to sit or to have to sit down and enjoy the, the yard. We're proposing a small patio, it's a regular uh, blue stone, large joints, about 113 uh, square feet in diameter, or 100 square, 113 square feet total. Uh, the patio would be pitched to the catch basin facing the northwest and away from the house. Literally, it's just going to house the current um, circular table, umbrella table with its uh, chairs. The issue is that there is no place for them to enjoy the yard. Uh, the, the yard itself is private. Uh, there's a hedge that lines the west property line. So people walking down the parkway really can't see the space from the street. It's hidden from view and uh, currently doesn't, uh, shouldn't uh, create a nuisance to the, to the neighborhood. Uh, the neighbors have given their blessing to the project and have no issues whatsoever with the patio construction. Do you have this packet in front of you? Uh, yes, if we can read it The first page will show us the current conditions there, um, which is self explanatory. Uh, the second page, however, does show precedent in the neighborhood. Uh, there are several locations around the corner that have front yard patios uh, with hedges bordering the patios. Um, considering the circumstances within the neighborhood and the circumstances with the with the homeowner, they're looking to have something similar, uh, but more uh, subtle. Melissa, could you address the difference between the patio and terrace issue? Sure. As uh, many of the pictures that the applicant provided show, those are actually considered terraces. Uh, terraces are allowed in front yards, a terrace must be at uh, grade level and substantially connected to the principal structure. Which actually clarifies to get to my question, which was going to be whether or not you guys had looked at the scenarios that incorporate extra space into sort of off of the normal walk so that it's not something unusual when the next guy comes in. We looked at connecting the walkway or the patio to the front entry. Uh, it really doesn't really fit because the sidewalk and the driveway are right next to the front door. There's no sense of place with that surface being so close to the house or being connected. The, the space listed in the first page shows the patio kind of set apart away from plain view from the street behind the hedge, tucked away where it doesn't really create an issue uh, with the neighborhood. We did look at options by connecting it with the house, but it just doesn't work that way. It didn't allow for the space functionally as well as aesthetically. Is that, <clears throat> that's a, a tree right just immediately adjacent to the 
to the entryway a, a small tree I see it's a eight, small eight foot tree right in the front and that was the landscaping when, when you said you know a reason that you couldn't do the terrace well there's a just beyond that, that corner there's the, the steps leading up to the front door and there's a railing mm -hmm. and there's a walkway up kind of a carriage walk that borders the driveway mm -hmm. leading up to the front door right. having a patio attached to the house meaning we would have to take the railing down modify the steps right and then create a hardscape next to another hardscape next to another hardscape right uh, which is difficult uh, to make it work um, and be functional pedestrian access is a place a part of that as well and is the patio going to have any sort of retaining walls or, or no. sides to it or is it just just at grade then straight to lawn? Yeah, the patio sits on grade. Um, we're not changing the grade whatsoever. In fact, we're pitching it away from the house mm -hmm. and towards that existing catch basin along the property line. So it doesn't really impede on, on drainage to the neighbors. The open joints of the patio allow water to pass through naturally mm -hmm. as a gravel base as well. So try to minimize the impact as much as possible. The patio itself, if you look at the front page, the lower right picture shows the, the table and chairs. The patio literally is just large enough to fit that table and chairs, that's it. We're not making it large enough to accommodate other seating areas, just, just to have a place to sit in front yard. Or something would that be? So it 
thirty two. Yeah. Yeah, that's much higher than thirty inches right now. I know, but what would we what would we say the minimum? We should apply a minimum height to that, assuming that there could be a scenario that goes away. Okay. So the question would be what would that minimum height be? A lot, like, a lot of like new plants will come in 30 to 36 inches. That's correct, right? Well, semi private would be four and a half to five and a half. You know, if you could look over and semi private. I'm, I'm saying like a new planting. Like if I brought out new plantings, I'm not going to get. Well, unless it's like an or something. You could put in five and six foot shrubs right away. Privacy. So, any condition you want to create uh -huh. is something that. I would suggest that uh, in the event of uh, fence variances that are approved in front yards, typically they're not approved over a head of four feet, so I would not suggest one variance. I wasn't thinking it higher than four feet. Um, do you guys think? I mean, I. Uh, I on, on something such a. I think it should be a requirement, but I don't, I think this is different than a fence. Um, in the fact that we are approving something with the purpose of screening here. That's what we're trying to do yeah, with this. Yeah, and I don't think we would limit the height so much as I'm less worried about the height if it's green. Right. So when, when Melissa mentioned four feet as being, uh, did I understand correctly, that's the maximum height of a fence in a front yard. Yes. So, but I would recommend that we not use that as a gauge, but use that as kind of our starting point for a green edge here, because we are approving a space that we are purposefully hiding. Right. So you're. So I'm thinking more of the four and a half to five and a half feet, okay. which is kind of what appears to be there now, something about six feet, below six feet. Okay. I don't like swiping it as we probably shouldn't get too hung up on the details because if we're going yeah. to trouble to to create this private space, we're probably going to want to maintain some kind of border. Well, it's, it's more so for so what happens when the next people come in and they decide they want to rip out all of these bushes because they want their patio to have street view. Okay, we can come back, we can roll around back to that. Um, I was just trying to get an idea of where, what people thought of that concept. Um, was there anyone else who wished to speak to us on this case? And again, Hi. if you could see your name and address, please. I'm Mary Tree Stab, 2627 Broadway. I live behind the property. Your houses are white black, west of me. This is a very unique property. They're back-to-back -back homes with no rear yards. And I actually went out um, after today to see how tall the trees, how tall the bushes were. And I think that this is a very unusual property and that you should support the petitioner today because it's beautiful from the street. They face the um, Metro Railroad. So for them to really cut down their bushes and have a height requirement, I think would really take away their privacy. I think the bushes are, I think they're about seven foot tall right now. I think it's a perfect height because the topsoil is equal with their windows on the first floor. And I think that in the future, that if they, somebody else bought this property and they wanted to come in and make up changes, that they should come before you again and um, state the case. I don't really think that their bushes should be limited to height because so right now, we're not limiting them. What we're saying is that we're basically saying that they either have to stay in place or somebody has to put back something that's right. sort of comparable. Okay, height. it's sort of comparable because it's it's really nice. And then you would have just yeah. Posted. We're not trying to alter the existing um, situation at all. Space. So I guess yes. that you would see. Yeah, okay. Thank you. All right. Thank you. Your name and address? Yeah, uh, my name is Gary Virginia. <laughs> I live at 1729 Camp, which is just about four houses away. 
and they went through the popular, it's very unusual to them in the basis of training. And a lot of their products do not have any hand care, or very, very little. And sort of our neighborhood is everything that encourages these things. So I think people are going to be far. So they mix them at home, which is where you want to see them. It just feels like it, it's going to be a good to go down from their place down to the next team. So next team, you'll see that the other skipper has this Jewish a little bit that day, and then there's no next So it just feels like it's in the character of the black and 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 Okay, and um, Mr. Ryan, do you have anything else before we close the record and begin our deliberations? No. Well, I think Kimberly wants them to do the right thing. She doesn't want to impact the neighborhood whatsoever. I think she's doing everything she can to make this a nice place for her family without impacting anybody. So. providing that buffer. It's not as hard as a fence. Um, 
especially some sort of a privacy fence. Um, I mean, so, yes, so having something like this is a little more... Still a little bit less desirable in most neighborhoods to have a five-foot hedge along the front yard line, but it's more desirable. It's more desirable and certainly allowed versus this. Alright, so then with that, that in consideration, we will run through the standards for a major variation. I believe we only have the one variation with respect to the location because, as we've noted, um, we do not have any issues with respect to the lot coverage for impervious service, etc. So with that, the requested variation will not have a substantial adverse impact on the use, enjoyment, or property values of adjoining properties. It appears that, generally speaking, the homeowners um, already use this space in a manner similar to um, that which is proposed, and I see um, no variation in, in the impact on the neighboring and joining properties um, by this by this change to the to the front area. Standard number two, the request of variation is in keeping with the intent of the ordinance. Um, as we've noted, um, this is a fairly cut and dry standard. However, the um, very unique, as we will get to, um, aspect of the property does make this a situation in which uh, the variation would be keeping Standard number three, the alleged hardship or practical difficulty is peculiar to the property. And indeed, as we have discussed, it's a peculiar property that essentially has two, um, two front yards and no rear yard, and the majority of the side yard is taken up front with driveway essentially eliminating the uh, possibility for an outdoor patio space within what is essentially a single family area of the city. Um, therefore, it is certainly a peculiar property um, that would suffer particular hardship if the standards were carried through. The property owner would suffer particular hardship or practical difficulty as distinguished from mere inconvenience if the strict letter of the regulations were to be carried out. Um, and as previously noted, um, because of the peculiar nature of the property, um, indeed that hardship would be applied. Stemmer 5, the purpose of the variation is not based exclusively upon a desire to extract additional income from the property. There's no evidence uh, that the owners intend to extract additional income or uh, move from the premises that this work is to be done, nor is there evidence that um, this work will substantially increase uh, the property value of the property itself. So we have used to as well. Standard so number six, the alleged difficulty or hardship has not been created by any person having an interest in the property and indeed um, this scenario of the kind of two front facing uh, home is, is not a new one and, and not created by the current owners. Standard number seven, the request of variation requires the least deviation from the applicable regulation along the feasible options identified for the zoning board of appeals and uh, having looked at what scenarios are available, there are, are virtually no other scenarios to accomplish um, a usable outdoor space, um, and therefore it would meet the standard for least deviation. With that, is there a motion? I would move the matter of CBA 13 CMJV 0075 regarding 2619 Poplar Avenue that we grant the requested zoning relief with the conditions that the property owner and all future property owners maintain a minimum height four and a half inch, four and a half inch, mm -hmm. four and a half foot landscaping screen uh, to shield the property from the front sidewalk and that the existing runoff be maintained. 
Second the motion. Just one quick thought. Would it be appropriate, I mean, this question for Ken, to say uh, so long that the green buffer is required so long as the patio is in place? Because otherwise they would have to. Well, no, because if they remove the patio, then. I know, it's so only do we have to say that. We have to say they don't need the green buffer if the patio is not there as part of the. It's a condition on the grant of the variation. Okay, so, so if, if the patio goes away, we don't have their condition. So, so long as they don't make use of the grant of variation, they aren't required to. The condition. Okay, then that's fine. All right, so it's been made. Did you make your second? Yeah. So the motion has been made and second. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 And the motion is carried unanimously. Good luck with your project. Thank you. Okay, moving along, our next order of business is going to be 802 Florence Avenue, and when you're ready, you can read that into the record, Melissa. Karen Pratt, property owner, applies for major zoning relief to construct an open porch in the street side yard. The applicant requests an open porch yard obstruction with a street side yard setback of two feet where a minimum 13.5 feet is required. Zoning code section 6419B1. The Zoning Board of Appeals is the determining body for this case. Documents included as part of the record include variance application submitted July 31st, 2013, standards form, zoning analysis, plat of survey dated November 18, 1994, site plan, elevations, zoning map of property, image of property, spark meeting minutes of August 14, 2013, as well as two additional images of the existing porch that were provided by the applicant that were handed out at the beginning of tonight's meeting. Okay, if I could swear in anyone who wishes to speak to us regarding this case. I'm alone tonight. All right. Do you swear or affirm to tell the truth throughout the course of these proceedings? I do. Thank you very much. And again, if you could state your name and address for us. My name is Karen Pratt. I'm the property owner at 802 Florence in 600 Washington. It has two addresses. It's one piece of property. Um, there's a two flat at 1600 Washington. There's a garage and driveway on Florence, and the 802 property is next to the driveway and the, and the garage. What I'd like to do is take down the small front porch um, and expand it, make it a little bit larger. It wouldn't obstruct anyone's view or anyone's passage. It faces my garage. It doesn't even face the sidewalk, so it's um, it's not. Uh, what do I want to say? It's not offensive in any way to anyone else. Um, the porch that exists now is pretty much falling apart and needs to be redone. And I understand that I'm grandfathered in. If I wanted to just rebuild it the same way, there wouldn't be a problem. But it's very, very tiny. And there's plenty of space there to make it a little bit larger. Also, I have to take down the porch to fix the chimney, which is in great need of repair. And so if you can see the rendering of the proposed plan, the new porch would go completely around the back of the chimney and not just chop the chimney in half. So I think aesthetically it's a big improvement. It'll give me a little space um, outside and it's not offensive to anyone in the neighborhood. So I don't know what else I can tell you. Maybe the pictures will help others. Can you explain again what the, what's going on with the two addresses on one property? Somebody, please. You know what? <laughs> that's, that's a very good question. Um, I've tried to separate this property because it's just almost gotten to be too much for me to take care of, but that's not a possibility. So I've decided to improve it instead. On the, two, on the corner of Florence and Washington Street, there is a two flat that faces Washington. The address is 1600. All right, if you go down Florence, if you're going south on Florence. Okay, we're south on Florence from Washington. Yes, there's a garage and a driveway, okay. and then there's my house at 802 Florence. I believe the PIN number for the proper, I don't know the PIN number, but I think it's listed under 802 Florence, but it's two addresses. So is that really, Melissa, all one <laughs> plot? Of yeah, I'm not lying to you. <laughs> that is correct. It is all one property. It is legally non um, this is in the uh, zoning district that allows for two-family structures. 
but she has two separate structures. There are two principal structures on the property, and she is talking and about it, the property that is It can't be stuff. separated because it doesn't meet the minimum standards, but there's Correct. no opportunity to provide an exception for an existing non-conforming situation to subdivide. Not without approval of the variance process. So she and can come to us. There is a property line here, even though there isn't? No, there's, there's no property line. Okay, so we don't have to worry about any property line between the two buildings. No, there's only That's, one. yeah, we're only okay. talking about street side yard setback. Okay. But, but the is this the one where I couldn't find out the site plan? There's only, there's a flat and then there's a fence. Maybe I missed it. There's not an actual site. You don't have a rendering for the new construction section? No, I was trying to find the site plan, but I, I couldn't find it. So the site plan included is the plan of survey with the proposed porch drawn directly over the existing porch and showing uh, that it is larger. Okay, so this is her front yard. My side yard. I don't have a front yard. Yeah, but, <laughs> but you, live, do you, you live in this. The 802, the small house. house. I don't live in a two flat. I live so, in from your perspective, it's your front yard. Yeah, well, I suppose. Zoning wise, it's not, but I'm just trying to understand. I'm trying, to, is. I'm trying to get my mind around your world for a second and not the lot. It's second. what I consider my front door because it opens up into my living room. Right. And if I were to move the porch back, my, I would walk out my front door and fall to the ground. So, there really isn't any way to move it back, any conceivable way to make it further back from the street. Okay. And we're not moving the structure any closer to the street than the structure already is. No. But we still need a set we still need a variance because we're making it because we make it okay. a little bit bigger. Okay. So let me get this straight. There's two properties on this one place. Both of them face Florence, but none of them but no. that's the side yard. No. Washington sixty the other one faces Washington. Oh, Washington. Okay. They have a backyard and a side yard. But I, I think I, I think I not a separate issue, but I think I heard that potentially you could come before us for a variance to separate the properties. So okay, one thing at a time. And <laughs> not just <laughs> clarify that little conversation, that side conversation there. So because it seemed like that might be a scenario. Okay.
considering the standards for a major variation for the side yard setback of two street side yard setback of two feet where a minimum of 13.5 feet is required. Standard number one, the requested variation will not have a substantial adverse impact on the use, enjoyment, or property values of adjoining properties. As the owner has mentioned, there has been um, no adverse feedback um, from the neighborhood. And given the fact uh, that the porch is no closer to the street side yard than uh, the slightly larger porch is no closer to the street side yard than the existing porch and as well the uh, existing structure and there's no reason to believe that it will have substantial adverse impact on the enjoyment for use of, of properties in the neighboring area. Standard number two, the requested variation is in keeping with the intent of the zoning ordinance and indeed is the intent of the zoning ordinance to uh, promote uh, the use and enjoyment of properties uh, both inside and out and to afford um, viability of uh, open front porches for residents to use and the location of this uh, porch while technically in the street side yard um, will act very much as a, an opportunity uh, for a front, front porch for this this dwelling unit. Standard number three, the alleged hardship or practical difficulty is peculiar to the property. There's been discussion about the fact that this property is an existing non-conforming situation with uh, two separate uh, dwelling structures on the existing lot um, and therefore um, the situate the this older structure um, close to the street side yard uh, creates a scenario uh, that is peculiar to the property. Standard number four, the property owner would suffer particular hardship and practical difficulty as distinguished from mere inconvenience the strict letter of the regulations were to be carried out. Um, the property owner has indicated that she has looked into the possibility of even uh, moving the door. Um, however, that uh, is not feasible given the layout of her home and therefore in order to replace the existing porch structure uh, with a little bit more space for outdoor use um, it would require a variance and therefore would be a particular hardship versus a practical difficulty. Standard five, the purpose of the variation is not based exclusively upon a desire to extract additional income from the property property owner uh, indicates that uh, she plans to continue to, to use this property and there's no evidence that uh, this slightly enlarged porch will substantially impact the value of the property uh, in such a way as to create significant additional income as well. Standard number six, the alleged difficulty or hardship has not been created by any person having an interest in the property. Um, this uh, is very similar to many of the um, many of the old lots uh, in Evanston that have uh, since had their kind of rear portion subdivided. It, even though this one has has not, uh, in all of those situations as as with this, um, were not created by the current residents and therefore um, not by somebody having an interest. In Standard number seven, the requested variation requires the least deviation from the applicable regulation among the feasible options identified for the Zoning Board of Appeals. And again, as noted, um, this revised porch uh, replaces an existing porch with the exact uh, same set setup. And um, this is a, a very minimal uh, request. That is their motion. I would move in the matter of um, 13 ZMJB 0073 regarding 802 Florence Avenue that we approve the request to the zoning relief, um, provided that the property be developed in compliance with the documents and testimony submitted with this case. I'll second that. It's been moved and seconded. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 The motion is carried unanimously. Good luck with your project. Okay, the next item on our 
our agenda is 2200 Gray Avenue, and we're ready for that to be read on the record. And you're ready, Melissa? Ethan, Janine Martin, and James Christopher Nevels, Nevels, property owners, appeal the zoning administrator's decision to deny zoning relief, case number 13, CMNB0059, from section 6467F3A of the zoning ordinance. That states the maximum fence height in a required street side yard is four feet. The applicant applied for zoning relief to construct a 4.3 foot solid wood fence with a 1.2 foot lattice top for a total fence height of 5.6 feet in the street side yard. The applicant was granted relief from section 6467F2B to permit a fence in the street side yard, but was denied relief from section 6467F3A to exceed the maximum allowed four foot height in the street side yard. The fence variance was partially granted to allow a three foot solid wood fence with a one foot lattice top for a total fence height of four feet in the street side yard. The Zoning Board of Appeals is the determining body for this case. Documents included as part of the record are appeal application submitted August 2nd, 2013, appeal exhibits submitted by applicant, standards form, fence variance applic application submitted June 4th, 2013, Plan of survey dated August 31st, 2009. Site plans, minor variance public notice, letter of objection, minor variance staff standards form, staff and applicant correspondence, minor variance public notice of approval, images of property, aerial view of property, and zoning map of property. Okay, this time can we swear in anyone who wishes to speak with us regarding this matter? Do you swear our friend tell the chief the course of these proceedings? Yes. Thank you very much. And again, as you uh, begin uh, speaking, you can state your name and address for work. Hi there. I'm Chris Nevels. I'm the property owner. And our address is 2200 Gray Avenue, Evanston, Illinois, 60201. This is my wife, Janine. Hi. Hey, Janine Martin. Okay, thank you. Um, we uh, initially looked at doing this project because we have two small children. And we have a very small yard uh, between a garage and our house. And we're seeking an area where our children can play safely. And this is a solution that we, we came up with uh, to achieve that goal of allowing our kids to play in the yard where they, they can't get out into the street or out of the yard. Um, so when we applied, we were granted the the, I don't know, I think it's the two.